I'll fix up the yard. Score, they're good. Morgan Geist, by the way, out of Detroit. This is the Green Devil Audio for Rudy. That one's done. It's been chilling. As I, as I die by bashing my head into the counter. So, Rudy wants to do our sticker, but I want to do his sticker instead. So, but, uh, Miss Gooby is back here cleaning woofers. This is a triple stack with thick top plate with some fractured magnets. I said, I don't care if they're fractured. Put them on there. Fill them with jizz. Right? Young, dumb, and full of cum. That's how the devil likes them. All right, so... This is the Beefy 8. There we go. So it's a it's an abbreviated motor because it, it uses, I think these are six and a half, six and a half inch diameter. I keep wanting to put this on that, but I know that's live, so, <laughs> so that's that's not a good idea. So we want to offer this in a three inch or a triple stack. See? Triple stack and quad stack, as you saw. Um, the top plate, I had the boys program this into their computers. As you can see here, it has a four hole of the five inch pattern. It also has, let me see if I gotta, nope, I gotta go over there. It handles the CT Sounds lower to base frame which I keep this specifically for the bolt pattern. Um, Cause typically I put these back to back and then transfer so you can use them all. But uh, did, I, did I already show this? I feel like I already showed this. Anyways, it's, it uses all the bolt patterns that I know of. So including the five inch, the only one that it doesn't include is the 120 millimeter that um, typically Sundown uses for their SA, but whatever. They make two versions of that anyway. I think the 120 millimeter is just, you know, sometimes what the factory picks when you let. So you, that's, you know, you want to be very specific, but also you sometimes you want to be flexible and you're like, it's so much easier if you just go, hey, what do you got cooking right now, China? And then China's like, we got this, this, and this. And you're like, all right, give me a hundred of each or whatever. And, and then you tag it on there and then, you know, you send the money, you hope and pray and then it gets here and you find out if you win or lose that's pretty much it that's that's china so you want to make those bets as small as possible and as effective as possible uh for a guy like me i'm super tiny um as far as doing what i'm doing so and but i recommend see i would love to be as big as like george campos george campos runs lord of bass so, but I doubt I'll ever get that big. I'll end up, probably end up doing something else in the meantime. So, like helping Tesla take over the world, which is fine. I think they're going to do a really good job with the world. So, but uh, this uses the, oh, I was explaining to Adam earlier. So, this is, that's why I, I feel like I'm repeating myself. This is the dual two, two and three eighths coil used um, on the MoFo from Power Acoustic. Also the T7 on the Soundstream platform, and then also used in the L7 12 inch. And then a couple, like they, they, they change their versions from year to year. Yeah, I, I just pull them all apart. And then I find two that look similar and then I'm like, okay, that's good. We'll make a pair out of that. And typically what I do on those is I go one size down. So if it was a 12 inch originally, then I'll make it a 10 inch. And so then it's like a hardy 10, you know, and people go, I love that. And I go, yeah, me too. And so it performs the way that it's supposed to. But anyway, so th this is the coil that I chose for this platform for the beefy eight. So <clears throat> this is the dual two. This is the fatter of the two. And so the, the dual eight or the dual four coil will be a little skinnier, which is fine. Um, you're not going to have any real issues that sometimes you get whenever you change uh, coils like that. Um, what they do is they actually change the 
ID of the washer uh, to be tighter or looser. Um, but we have magnet energy to spare, so it's not going to be a fucking problem at all. Plus, I don't want to make two different sizes. I want them to be universal. Uh, I also don't want to make these. I want you to make them. So what I want to do is make the motor and then you guys make the eights, right? Because you, you like eights. I don't like eights, but I like helping people. And I, I, I do like, mm, I do like, uh, just spin on it. Spin on it, babe. Uh, I do like making stuff for you guys and I have these just sitting around. So why the fuck not? So this would also make a good uh, 10, 12 or 15, of course. So, um, but I wanted to show you that this one failed due to a little bit of like not making good contact here, but it's actually repairable. We can grind all this old glue off, uh, devil's jizz, and then re put the top back on. But, um, the coil was burned. So I blamed abuse, which is whatever. It's fine. But this was, this was the original quad stack. And then I put the new, um, crucible ferrite on it, which is the same as, where was it? The other one, the other, the other quad stack that I showed you. So, but, um, I'll put that back together and flip it again. And then we got, uh, Sherry's pulling all these. It was funny. I was listening to the, um, Rabati brothers, uh, Harry and then whatever his brother's name is. And. They were talking in the uh, their native tongue uh, about the brother had some concern that I was taking the woofers and Harry was like, don't worry about it. Of course, this is me all just sort of translating, but I, I, don't, I don't really know that language. So I'm just having to look by, you know, their tones and things like that. But to me, it seemed like they were concerned that I was going to sell them or or have people bring them back. But I'm like. I didn't assure him, but he, he already knows that I don't, I don't want to sell Majestic Woofers. Um, personally, I don't think it's that great of a brand, but it, it exists and people are, are probably more aware of it than uh, Robot. So um, it's a more popular brand than what I've created. Um, but I think the problem with selling it under the Majestic brand is that people tend to not want to pay for it. Um, and that's why Robotis does the triple, the, the, the typical dealer thing, which is that you say it has a high MSRP and then you break it down and sell it for less than that. So this was the version that I created. This is, again, I left the little skew on there to make it look official, but there's no badging on the back. So there's no risk of this making its way back to their shop. And uh, someone saying, hey, that woofer you sold me, it blew up on its own and I'm like, okay, so they're actually really nice. They, they just swap it out because they want you to be happy. Me, I want you to be fucking miserable and blame me for all your problems. So I don't do free woofers. So, uh, just because you don't know how to use equipment. So guess who's, guess who's blown a shit ton of woofers. Me, 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 me. So I know what it takes to blow a woofer and I know that I was doing wrong. And so you need to know that you were doing wrong. And the only way to do that is to, you know, put your nose in the corner and tell you you're a bad person um, and fill you with shame. And you do that by publicly shaming someone to show them that how dumb they are. Really, really, uh, of course, this is a joke, but really what I want to show them is that they lack experience. And they, if you read any warranty, read, read them, actually fucking read it and understand what they're talking about. None of them cover things like fish tanks, right? If your woofer goes into a fish tank, not covered. If your woofer catches fire for any reason of external or internal, not covered, uh, any, any type of burning. And even if you think it, it is covered, it's up to them to decide whether or not it's a defect or not. And you have to pay the money to send it back. So, and you have to, you know, a lot of times they make you jump through a lot of hoops where they're like, you need to send us the original purchase receipt and all this other stuff that you, that you indeed paid retail for this and not just picked it up on, uh, you know, jizzfest.com or whatever. And, and then, you know, brought it in. So, but, uh, and see, that's the thing is I, I back up my 
woofers that I build three years. And because I, I date them, I secretly date them, actually a couple of places, but, um, or I put the date on them. I don't date them. I pay for their services and then I use them and then I throw them away. But uh, so, or I put the donation on the table, sorry. But um, I give a three year warranty against defects on all the woofers I build. And then in fact, if you're just nice to me, Sometimes I'm, guess what? I'm nice to you. But if you come in like fucking demanding, like this one guy did on fucking Father's Day, and then like the terminals broke, and then he, he tells me that I gave it to him like that, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And then like the kid's like, you need to talk to my mom. I'm like, finally, some of these reasonable. And no, the, the mom is, is, is crazier than the two idiots that are yelling at me on Father's Day. So, but, uh, and that, that's, that's my life. And, it's not that I want to uh, at all <sighs> glamorize it or even like a Kardashian where it's, you know, you're filming a car wreck. Basically, uh, I, I want to show you some of the things that I have to deal with and why I say and do the things that I do the way that I do them. Um, it's through experience. I've experienced this many, many, many times. And the, the best way to handle it is a way that a lot of people don't agree with, right? And uh, I got I to gotta post the link. It was, uh, there's an episode of Louis where Louis C.K. is in a high-end cooking utensil place in New York. And I, I, won't, I won't spoil it for you, but he learns a lesson about his expectations and about his ego. And I think it's a really valuable lesson. Now, is it probably above the IQ level of most of the people that buy base related products? Yes, but I don't care. That doesn't stop me from trying to educate you so that you can become a better person that's more productive in our society. That, you know, I don't care if it's fighting a fart in a dust storm. Uh, I, will, I will make the farts. I will ride the dust storm. It doesn't matter. I, I, I would rather do that than give up, right? So I, I was talking to my buddy Adam that visited today. I love you, Adam. And uh, he's, yeah, I was telling him about the, you know, a couple of incidences that I ran into. And he goes, he started laughing and he goes, people don't want to have that conversation. I, I, and I said, I know, I know they don't want to have that conversation, but that conversation exists. So it's like, what do I do? You know what I mean? And then, so then you, you go the other way with it where, you know, thank you. The customer is valued and. Uh, you know, come again, and but you got to charge them retail, right? Right here, this fucking thing is five hundred dollars retail, but you know, I won't sell it for five hundred dollars because I don't like taking people's money like that. And then if you want a forever warranty, that's fine. I'll give you a forever warranty, but you got to pay me five hundred dollars. See, that's how it works. It's a it's a trick. It's a trick, and I'm telling you, it's a trick. All right, because I don't want you to fall for the trick in the future. Okay. Stuff like that doesn't really cost that much to make. So I'll probably sell this for like 160 bucks and it'll come with a three year warranty. And it's a uh, two and five eighths. This would be considered the JYD series, Junkyard Dog. Cause what I did was I took a old Diamond Audio D3 uh, motor that was shifted and I replaced the ferrite with more than what should be there. And in fact, it's even got a negative T yoke where the T yoke is shorter than the top plate. But guess what? It still moves two inches linear it handles good power. Uh, I doubled up the leads on the spider. That's the yellow cheap spiders from uh, Lord of Base. And it makes, I've built so many on this with this coil because this coil is a little light. It's not, it needs to be heavier, but it's not. And so you have to use a soft suspension like you saw in the video with the um, JL Audio 12W7. And so this one is, again, it's pretty tits McGee. So I got, I got that by the way from Curtis Navarro who is, has been a, a very good friend. Uh, and I like him coming around. He also gives me free food, which is always nice, but uh, be nice to me. It's not that hard, be nice to me. Like everybody likes it when someone's nice to them, right? Just like everyone likes snuggles, everyone likes kisses. Like, you know, be nice. So somebody was asking about this today. This is Oscar's woofer, technically. I'm surprised he doesn't put Mr. Music Man on it, but he didn't. It's a single six ohm, it's basically a PA driver, but it's, you know, you'll see him advertising all these woofers. So also this one for like five, 500 bucks. I think that's what he's, he's a little for five or 700. 
Uh, but if you want to buy it, it's single six ohm. It's super awesome. It's really made for like outdoor events and PA. And what's really great about it being carbon fiber like that is that it's uh, water resistant. So the other thing I want to help get rid of is some of these passive radiators that we got from Concept. So they're from a company called Avalon. But I love this cone. I love that cork raised cork gasket. It looks really pretty. And then what you do is you mount this backwards like this, just temporary, on the outside of the on the box that you want to, to add the passive radiator to. And then what you do is you play the signal, the tone uh, that you want it tuned to. And then you add mass to that little guy in whatever way you can add like nuts and bolts and epoxy and all that kind of stuff. T typically what they do is in the lab uh, when they're tuning these things at the uh, factory, I should say, or wherever they're, wherever they're designing the product, they use silly putty or clay. And uh, then what happens is when you finally get it to the mass level that you want, then you put that on the scale, the little weed scale that you keep in your lab and uh, it's gonna tell you how many grams of mass you have to add in order to get to the tuning frequency that you want. And so then you just add that in like nuts and bolts and epoxy. And then presto, it, it's a tuned passive radiator. It's really good for something like, um, what was I gonna do it to? I don't think, it, no, the box is still outside. It's a, uh, it's a, it fits behind a, like a mini truck, like this, this one would be good. It's a little big. It, typically, if you're going to use a passive radiator, you want to use it in a small box on the small side, um, just because when you go larger, um, you then you need more PRs. So, but like I have a truck box that's like minus that. It's just that it's made for like S10 pickup trucks. It's really shallow. It was, originally, it was for two eights. We cut it out to make it for tens. But what's his name? Tiny William, the weirdo that weighed 650 pounds, but now looks like a melted candle. Um, he cut the holes too big, so we can't use it for the kicker basics. So I got to cut it even bigger and make it for a shallow 12 and then use one of the PRs. So then it'll be a single 12 with a single 12 passive radiator. So which kicker did fucking in the nineties, uh, which sounded great in the nineties. So, but, uh, I think that was it yeah it was this one so i made this one this one is based on the sundown sd version 2 and i put on a different top plate and different magnets and then i used the lord of bass version uh, v3 uh, cone which has the reverse rubber surround uh, by the way like i said uh, I talked to George. He's not going to import these cones anymore because I was the only one buying them. Uh, but the reason why I, I'm the only one that buys them is because I'm like the only guy that really makes custom woofers. And then also here in Arizona, there's a lot of fucking pickup trucks. People love pickup trucks here. So that's why I tend to buy them. So I'm going to have to start buying them directly from China. And we got to make sure that make sure you get the double stitch version. So in this case, what I did was I used the 180. I think this is the 180 millimeter poly cap but I went a little heavy on the glue to help glue that uh, surround down to keep it glued down because sometimes it, it comes undone I did a pair like this they looked a lot like this they this is the concept um, wrinkle brown I call it the the turd or the raisin finish um, I did some kicker L7s that I converted to 12s and they both came undone and so it was really disappointing but the guy ended up upgrading to something bigger and he was happier anyway so in the end it worked out but uh, in that case, it's a defect. And I gave him full credit. And I said, if you want to pay the difference on the upgrade, just pay the difference. And he's like, go for it. And so then I gave him a big motor like this, which was, uh, um, I think it was actually dual three quarter inch. It was a version of the TC9. And then it had a full three inch coil. This one has a two and a half inch coil. This is the um, Vato, Vato motor, which is uh, Lord of Bases version of the SA motor from sundown see sa vato get it um and then it's a two and a half inch coil chubby um and then i think they call it the lvl 25 and then they also make the lvl 3 so lvl 25 meaning 
and LVO3 meaning three inch coil. So there's nomenclature there. George is, you know, I don't know if he's naming it. I assume he's naming it. So, and then the triple stack version, which is now, I think it's 200 and, I wanna say 280. It's called the Glenn motor. That was after the engineer Glenn at, which I'm sure, I think George worked there is my guess. I haven't asked him about it, but uh, NCA uh, Labs, North California Audio Labs. Uh, Glenn there did a lot of OEM work for Memphis. He's the one that designed the Memphis Elvis. See, it's, you're not supposed to say Elvis, you're supposed to say LVS. See, LVS, Elvis. Because if you call it the Elvis, you have to pay Elvis money. Uh, this is a dual two concept. I got a whole shit ton of these that I can make, um, which I need to make because I don't have any in between woofers right now. It's fucking cupboard is bare. Uh, and then I already have these sold. And then I had the Cylon quad stack that, that disappeared today. So dude brought in trade and was like, I was like, coils burnt. I go, not my fault. So then he's like, all right, I'll upgrade. And then he upgraded and he's happy because he got a woofer today. See, I haven't even gone through these. Somebody was telling me, I think Sherry was going through these and was saying, sometimes I get helpers like Curtis that come over and say, they just like to pick open boxes which I actually need, by the way. I need helpers to come over and test these motherfuckers since Austin hasn't come back. I think Austin's still butthurt, so, which is fine. I'd rather have him butthurt in a way. No, these weren't, they said they were pink. Oh, I think they were talking about the speakers. Yeah, that was one of the reasons why these uh, failed, I think. Yeah, pink. So pink and gray is the color scheme. Again, a lot of these, um, the guy's name is Wang Hai. He, uh, he is Larry's partner over in China, and um, sometimes they design stuff that they like, but American audiences don't like. I'm, so, I'm sure this is popular in China, uh, where they probably sell them for about $250 a pair. But here in America, they don't know who Recoil is, and you know, pink and silver is probably not their thing. But because my people trust me, and I, I am good to them, I can sell all of this stuff. I'm like, just give it all to me, Larry. And he gives me a really good deal. And then I sell it. And then I promote him. And then I'm thankful for him because he, he floats me, right? He's my plug. He floats my drugs, my audio drugs, which you guys didn't buy, which I'm very thankful for. So, but, uh, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about was tomorrow. Uh, oh, here's the crossover I was talking about earlier. The, uh, There we go. So somebody is calling while I'm while I'm doing a video. Colby Carpenter. Anyways, this is the boss. Uh, what was it? LACS. I, I put the link in the other video. So this is it. This is the crossover. This is the Gonzo. Well, actually, I didn't call this the Gonzo crossover because I, I didn't think it was pretty enough. I called this the Hard Times crossover because uh, you know Hard Times is all about just making do with what you got. And so I I was wrong. It uses electrolytic in, in both the high pass and the low pass. And then it has uh, what looks like this is probably a Zobel filter for the low pass. And then this would be the high pass with the treater protection. Again, that's just me guessing based on my experience. And then it has two resistors that you can add resistance to pad down the treater, which is uh, a cheap and easy way to pad down your treater. The best way, of course, is an L pad uh, that you use to get the level you want. And then you measure the L pad to find out what the resistance values are uh, on the, I guess it would be R1 and R2. And then you solder those into the circuit so then it's permanent. So um, that's the right way to do a crossover. But you guys don't even want to read the loudspeaker cookbook. This was a test board from ADST. So this was probably used by Rumso. Look at those Omite, Omite fucking resistors and like super silver capacitors those are fancy ones mylar sprague sprague and then i got some i got all kinds of passive crossovers i just don't want to use them anymore so this was from the rockford fosgate see it says rockford fosgate and then i think this one was the uh 18 db slope it had an inductor and then two caps and then it was uh 18 db slope uh 8 ohm at 5k 
So it was like for like a super tweeter. Um, you can kind of figure out a lot of times what the, the products were used for um, just by looking at what the crossover points are like. I have these, I'll sell these uh, 25 shipped for some collector. These are two ohm component systems. It's probably a two ohm mid and then a four ohm tweeter. And these for, were for sound streams. SPL 50, which is their uh, five and a quarter uh, component, but you can use it for a four inch or even a six and a half because um, they're all crossover the same point because it's the crossover point is based on the tweeter, not on the mid. And uh, of course the Orion HCCA, dual channel. This one I believe works. I just got to put it in the case. Um, this one I'd probably do for 80 shipped. And then the only thing it's missing is the Plexi that fits inside the case. I have the case brand new uh, because we got those from Precision Powder Coat. Was it Precision? Yeah, Precision Powder Coat because they had ADST had stiffed Precision Powder Coat out of a couple hundred thousand dollars in uh, powder coat bills. So, but those guys are okay. Pat and Paul, they're they're doing but good. They got a fucking conveyor belt or conveyor line uh, powder coat machine. So. We got some of the. What do I get? My, I'm still, I don't. I'm not really calling these anything. It's the dealers only. I like calling it dealers only, and then marketing under the Blackjack brand because the Blackjack brand is what I came up with for Blackjack Audio. That basically everything that you buy gets you at least double your money, if not one and a half. Um, and so, and then it's called dealers only. Get it, dealer Blackjack, all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, you just gotta have a theme. It's all the audio, same shit. You just gotta have a theme. But um, those are those are good too. I sell those for 160 a pair shipped with a three year warranty. They got a swivel tweeter. Oh, I want to show you that. So I got you guys are into that shit stuff that you can't see anywhere else except the robot underground. Those are the six and a halfs. Typically, that's all I stock because we get shipments now. I think twice a month from uh, China. Uh, thanks to my buddy who. He actually gets four shipments a month. So these are the prototypes that we got. These were what I was referring to when I said um, we get 50 more watts RMS. These end up being, I think it was 100 and, yeah, it was 120 or 150 watts RMS if you use a high pass filter at about 120 hertz um, because they use a cast frame. They use an aluminum frame, which ends up acting as a better heat sink. Steel has a really easy saturation point. Uh, it, it is higher, but uh, there's more thermal mass when using the aluminum and uh, the, the aluminum helps get away uh, rid of the heat easier better so but whatever it just is better and then so I want to actually do a neo motor that's even mm, hold on people are people are calling me they're bugging me they're like don't do your videos and like I want to do my videos uh, and then of course this is the red black uh, glass fiber uh, is this the swivel? Yeah, swivel tweeter. Otherwise, I would have broke it. And then uh, we wanted to import the, the grills on their own. Uh, you got grill A and grill bay. A bay. Um, and then, you know, those are optional because what we found out with the Gonzo tweeters is nobody gives a shit that they're fucking polished uh, aluminum. So we then we were like, fuck it, make them black ABS. So we'll import these on their own. And then you can add them to whatever you want, whether it's a, a woofer or a mid or whatever so but these are samples i paid good money for and uh i like them but i just don't want to spend 20 grand on uh i forget how many pair or whatever they said i got to order so because i got my my big brother larry brings in the recoil speakers which i have a ton of i, I just buy these off of uh, amazon sometimes i got them on sale for like 25 a pair and then i sell them locally for like 40 a pair and mostly it's just again to help people because otherwise, if you have to go to Best Buy, they sell these for $89 a pair plus tax. Fuck you, Best Buy. Um, and so I can help people and make a little cash, and that's that works for me. So those are the... I was calling them Hard Times Pro for a while, but those are the uh, dealers only, Blackjack Audio or whatever. I leave them blank, so um, you can put your own badge on them. Um, and we when we get big shipments of them that's when i want to offer them up to you guys because one of the reasons why uh, you, you don't see a lot of stuff offered is because if people start ordering and you're already out then they go oh you're incompetent or you know or you know you're you're a liar you know that's the worst one they call you a liar and you're like no we just sold out of them really quick and they're like 
fuck you, man. You said I was going to make money. And then people take things personal and it's just fucking crazy. So, but we don't want to do that. Uh, but if you see this video and you want to try a pair and that's how I recommend it is that's how you get started is you have the pair for yourself. And then of course you don't sell what's in your vehicle. You just say, I can hook you up. And then all you have to do is be cheaper than focal because they sound as good or better than focal. It's like fucking compare them, ABM. And you know, and even if they prefer the focal, you go, okay, well, is that worth $650? Yes or no. And you go, I can offer something very similar or better uh, for say 350. See? And so and you, you even do a high MSRP and then you come down a little bit. So you say MSRP of 400 and then you go, well, you're a good guy. I'll do I'll give you a bro price for 350 and they go, okay. And then it costs you of course, 160 shipped. And then you have me ship it to your friend with your return address. So he never knows about me. So I stay underground and you look like a fucking hero, right? That's the plan guys. You know, make a plan, act on the plan. Uh, so, but, uh, I got people calling me. I will talk to you later. Um, I love you. I really do love you. You need to hear that more often, right? And then go love yourself. Go love your wiener. Go love each other. I mean, wash your hands, but I love you. Bye.